All right, you guys, is your pro productivity, is it a blessing or a curse? We're going to talk about it. All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. And we are in full on harvest season, going into full on harvest season here at the farm. And we just want to jump on and talk to you all about some things that are on our heart today and what's going on here at the farm. So there we go. <laughs> We've had a busy couple of weeks, but in a different way. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, right now, we are we have a lot to do a lot we have a lot of harvesting to do yep. a uh, friendly reminder that in illinois um we got a very late start because of weather yes and other priorities but right. um we uh i think it was mid-june if i remember correctly it was mid-june and we got stuff in the ground mm -hmm. and some of those were starts and some of those things were from seed because of unsuccessful starts. Weather was really tricky. We had a lot of cold still. We had uh, a lot of rain yep. in June and then it stopped, <laughs> yep. but we had, uh, we were dealing with a lot of different weather scenarios. And I know many of you guys are in the same boat. For sure. Um, so who else is in harvest season right now? Um, <laughs> We, there's some things that are, have already come and gone and that were like our lettuces and we're about to do a, a fall planting of those. But right. um, yeah, tell us, uh, I want to hear where everyone is from, Yep. Um, whether you're a part of the live chat or in the replay, I want to hear where you're from, uh, what you are doing in your garden, um, what you, if you are harvesting right now, if it's a busy season for you, I want to hear all of that stuff. Um, so for us, uh, we just... We just got back yes. from an 11 day trip. So what did we you did? Tell we went an 11 day trip. It was a great family time and we got to enjoy some company out to the East Coast and we got to focus on just having a good time as a family. But um, today we're going to talk about once again, is your productivity a blessing or a curse? Yeah. Keep that rolling around your mind. Yes. And, you know, most people, of course, think, well, of course, it's a blessing, but we're going to get into both sides of that today. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> Daryl, I definitely understand the weed scenario. So we ha we had excellent, excellent caretaking of our garden this year as far as weeds go. We did. And we stayed on top of it. It was super productive. Super productive garden. Yeah. Um, but then we left for 11 days. We prepared the garden before we left and we left for 11 days and then came home to some weeds that were as tall as I am. Yes. There's a spiritual, which is not that hard. There's it's a five spiritual feet. principle in this, isn't there, right? <laughs> yeah. Let the garden go unattended for 11 days and the weeds will pop up, right? <laughs> right. So, um, so the last few days, we have been spending a lot of time kind of reclaiming the land here. Yep. Um, nothing is ruined. Nothing is the only, the only frustrating part of that is, um, and this is also a principle is <laughs> some of the weeds that went to seed that quickly, which, which is shocking to me. Um, some of the seeds, uh, the weed seeds that are coming up, you know, are yeah. wanting to, to go to seed and then spread their lovely seeds all over. I'm right. like, that's what we tried to stay we'll on top cut of. Cut them off. <laughs> so we were so diligent and tried to stay on top of it. And um, yeah, so that was unfortunate, but that's okay. It's, there we go. it's nothing that we can't uh it, it is amazing how these weeds can just push through. So real quick, let's go into a couple things. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It is a huge support to us. And we are super thankful when you guys smash that subscribe button and we appreciate it. So that's we really do. We yeah, do. that's we do appreciate it. And you guys know all you faithful ones who are watching. We we've had some exciting stuff come up recently, and that is that we joined the Abundance Plus family yes. community over at AbundancePlus.com and their community side. And um, yay, Tina, I'm glad you caught a live. Uh, so we're so happy to be a part of that uh, family mm -hmm. and um, to uh, you know be able to create content over there. And there's some really great en en entertainment over there, but there's also really good how-tos and instructional oh videos. Gosh, the depth of knowledge And just is inspiration. Great. Um, 
if uh, I think they're still doing a seven day free trial right now, too. So if you uh, go to our link for it, right. you can get that seven seven day free trial and see not only our original video that's on there. Yeah. Are you are you having fun over there? I am. What, what's happening? I'm just making a tweak. It's no big deal. Oh gosh, yes. you know you're hurting his hurting Daryl's ears. <laughs> um, okay, he just made it louder, Daryl. <laughs> In Chicago, yes, we have time for a. You know what? Let's jump in this real quick. I'm going to cut you off. Well, just, let me finish, and then you okay, can say fine. Okay, big news. So it is big news. Go over to Abundance Plus. Yes. Not just because we're there. We have a link below in this too. Because so many people are over there providing really great quality content, and it's free right now. You can check it out. Free. You can decide if you like it or if you don't like it, and. Um, <laughs> Daryl, you can't make me laugh. It distracts me. I'm trying to focus on what's saying. So I'm not going to look at the comments right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, we cre we put up our first video over there. And this first video was just an introduction into who we are, and as well as kind of the, the birth and the heart and the starting of yes. Heartway Farms and that whole process and our story together. Yes. Um, so you're going to want to go check that out. We've got new stuff coming up there soon. So you're going to want to get on there. And our editor did a phenomenal job. It is like movie quality. So. Yeah, Levi is yeah. our editor and he's amazing. So, um and if you're out of canning jars real quick, Tina, um, we also have a link. If you go to heartwayfarms.com, we have a affiliate link on there and we have four jars, which does provide the canning lids um, for the jars so, and with discounts. So, and we have been really happy with them yeah, so far. And so there's far, a lot so of good. other ones that have uh, demoed them out there that they've worked out great. So you might be low on jars. Um, but if you need more canning lids, they have those over yeah. there. So I, trying to give you guys resources as well. Yeah. Um, specifically, I'm going back to Abundance Plus because Josh is like, just like, squirrel. you know, you yes. guys know we're like that. That's okay. Um, but uh, shipping to Canada, I don't know. But um, over on Abundance Plus, I was just watching uh, the other day. The <laughs> Julianne was cooking. See, another squirrel. Welcome to the family. <laughs> um, that's Julianne the squirrel. And it was so cute. I have to say this. Someone stopped by the farm the other day, one of our faithful YouTube watchers. Yep. And uh, two people, two different groups of people actually at the same time, they were both um, faithful uh, subscribers. And Julianne went out to greet them. And they're like, you're Julianne. <laughs> you're, the most famous We know of them. <laughs> the most famous of them all. That's what, it was funny. Yep. It made us laugh. And it made Julianne totally embarrassed. And it was so cute. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was funny cause Julianne is not, you know, she, the giftings are amazing, but she doesn't, you know, she doesn't flaunt it. So it's, it was really cute and sweet to meet people. Yes. Uh, I was watching an abundance plus I'm bringing it back to my focus. I was go. watching an abundance plus the other day, uh, the ladies homestead sit down, take over or talk, whatever they called it. Right. And any of the ladies who are watching right now. I would highly recommend going over there because it really brought some some nice insight into kind of the hearts behind some of these women that are, you know, a part of these channels and, uh, you know, content creation, as well as what they deal with on a daily basis, not only in the homestead world, but also the social media world. Because when you choose to go public in the world of YouTube or abundance plus or whatever, you also put yourself out there to be criticized. And it's one and and there's also wonderful, wonderful people. And I know right. all of you watching are wonderful, wonderful people. But it's a great, it's a great community over there. It and is. it was a kind of a good, just fun, raw insight. Very. It's into, long, but it's worth it. Yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. but we go long sometimes too. So totally understand that. Yeah, we're good at, we're good at <laughs> chatting. Yes. Um, and hanging out with you all. So anyway, exciting things happening and good things happening. But when we, uh, when we came back from our trip, I... I was a little defeated and it takes a lot to, for me to feel that way. Right. And all of that hard work that we had put in suddenly yeah. came back and we're like, okay, so there was no rest. <laughs> There's no rest for the weary travelers. <laughs> there was just get your butt in gear. All of us, I'm talking to myself yep. and just get after it. And so we have, and we really, we're almost there. It's almost back to normal. Yeah. And, but once the weeds are gone, then it's time for harvest. Yep. So, um, we have some questions for you all. First of all, uh, what, you know, what are you, which one do you put up first? Sure, where you want to go. What are you, what are you harvesting right now? Um, and I like, what were your successes on your homestead uh, or your farm, your apartment, whatever you were growing or raising, what were your successes this year? Yep. Um, we have really good, other than squash bugs, 
everything else is done really good. Yeah, so even even in the unkept state that it was coming back from. That was fine. Most of it was it, pretty. But it's been continuing to produce. That's the point. Yeah, of it is producing yes. well, even, you know, despite the weeds and all of that. Right. Um, so for successes, though, we have so many tomatoes, um, some amazing, delicious yes. tomatoes that are out there. Yep. Our peppers are, our our jalapenos and our, uh, what were those? Cayenne peppers. Cayenne peppers. Are so good yes. and delicious. Our onions are ready. Our potatoes are ready. Um, it's all coming in. It's all coming in. We experimented with corn, and that was pretty good for a small. We only we only planted a very small uh, crop this year. So next year, I'm excited because yep. we can maybe expand that. But it was sweet. It was good. Of course, it's not as perfect as when you spray it with stuff, <laughs> right? Um, uh, so tell me, everybody, tell me what what were your successes this year? Mm -hmm. um, I would say when we had our lettuce in, it was really nice in the in the kitchen garden out front over there. We just walk out the door and get cucumbers and get lettuce and get jalapenos and um, all the things. It was it was a good uh, crop. Days we, and days of canning apples are ahead. Yes, they are. Who's who's <laughs> Six, got apples? Successes. We've got we've got someone that's on Vanessa. It looks like day three of canning apples today. I love it. Um, cucumbers and, were insane. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also had an insane amount of cucumbers, but it worked out great because we really love the three day pickles, two week pickles, more like it. You yeah. know, you can put them in there, make them refrigerator pickles real quick and then have them, you know, and honestly, I like to eat them closer to that two week mark because they are full of flavor and still just so delicious. But, um, we have never had squash bugs like we did this year. No. Never. never. They destroyed everything I've that never they got their hands them. on. Now, thankfully, we were able to harvest all that we needed with, like, the zucchini and stuff uh, before they demolished it, amazingly. And they're not messing with some of the pumpkins. Julianne just put up some pumpkins day before yesterday. Yep. She bought some sugar pumpkins because we, we... So she pure pureed them and canned them Yeah, up. she... We put our pumpkins, um, our little, you know, your little sugar pumpkins about yeah. that size. We, High she, pumpkins. She puts them... Yep. She puts them in the Instapot. And okay. cooks them down and then pulls everything out and then freezes it, actually. Mm -hmm. So we freeze that. Because um, if I remember right, I think it's frowned upon to can pumpkin, unless it's cubed. So we like it puree, ready to go. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do puree, puree canning. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to cube it and can it. So we've done that. Yeah. But our favorite way to do it is to puree it and freeze it in, like, serving size portions. So, right. like, uh, the amount that she uses in a pumpkin pie or a pumpkin crisp we just freeze it so that it's easy right. <laughs> we don't have to like defrost the whole thing and all of that so so we start off with the question is is your productivity a blessing or a curse it's a tough How question are we can get into that one well um because it's a loaded question so josh and i went out we went we needed a date night after we, our vacation we needed a date night <laughs> we yeah. needed after a date our night. family trip right <laughs> i like to differentiate <laughs> and shout out if you can relate i want to hear it in the comments so there's a difference between a vacation and a trip a family trip who can hear me <laughs> on this right okay so tell me if you understand what i'm talking about right and um this was definitely a trip not a vacation, but it was it was full of so much goodness yes. yeah. and so much fun um, and so much blessing. Um, and it was great. Um, but we were on a date right. we had to recover from our trip. Yep. Had, we had to have the, the uh, mom and dad uh, powwow, right? Yeah. So we uh, we went out to dinner the other night. And it was nice because it ended up being outside and live yep. music and all that. But we were chatting and we were talking about, um, you know, Productivity is one of those tricky things. Right. Um, it can either be a blessing or a curse or a little bit of both. And I think you guys are going to be able to relate to some extent because um, in times like this, when you have so much to do mm -hmm. and you can see it, you know, I can look out my window behind you all and I can see the garden and I can see the apple tree and the pear tree and I can see all of that and the we meat have, birds. We have meat birds coming up. Yeah. We, have, we have baby puppies that we're going to have to be. <laughs> Have to Take, be rehomed. Well, they're going to have to be rehomed. That's just another thing. Right? Thankfully, that's not as hard as we have like hay we have to put up yet. <laughs> yeah, we still so just to keep on throwing on the list. Sure, here? it doesn't matter. We have school, we have to start. <laughs> yeah. So you start thinking about all of these things. We have the fair coming up, and I know these don't seem 
like a big deal until you put them all together and then you realize, wow, we have a lot to do. And right. it can be it can become uh, a weight. That and we stay do. home pretty much yeah. too. It's not like we're like tied to different schedules. Right. So we uh, it can you can feel that weight that you're carrying, but. Uh, so that's what we're saying. Like it's either a curse or a blessing and in seasons it can, it can feel like a curse sure. because you suddenly, it, it's like when it rains, it pours, you know? Um, and like you have all this stuff that you have to get, you have to get done at some point. And it's like, how do you, what, what, what's your approach? Do you guys feel that way? Like, you know, does, is your, uh, your productivity, whether it's in your job, in your home, uh, right. working working outside of the home, um, any of these things. What is your productivity? Does it feel more like a blessing or like a curse? Sure. Um, and That's a fair question. Yeah, and just start to consider that and see what what comes up. And one thing, we'll take it a little bit of a, a different direction. Um, we had somebody say to us the other day wow, you guys are really productive, you know, yeah. and that's great. And that, and we try to be like, we want to be sure. um, productive in all of these things. Don't want to wander around and be like not productive right? right? or just busy, busy doing nothing. <laughs> right. Well, but you, that's exactly your, your tag is like, you don't want to just be busy. Right. Um, but I think when, when that productivity comes first, before everything else is when it truly becomes a curse. Sure. Um, and I mean, how can the, how in our own life? So we're talking about prioritization, yep. right? So we've got this, this, this farm, we've got this homestead. We have the, we have the blessed family of YouTube and all these things. Um, and at some point in time, you have to choose what's going to be the priority. And at what point in time are we going to let some th certain things go to keep the main thing, the main thing. Right. And, our family keeps the main thing of the Lord in our life, our family, and then everything else that falls below that. And really the community relationship is, it comes in as a close third into those things. Um, because at the end of the day, we've talked about this is that produce and weeds and um, things that can spoil um, kind of take, they take a backseat even to relationships and to just communicating with people and building those that community relationships um, of, of networking that family, right? That bigger right. family. So it's one of those things where we've, we've chosen it. You have to prioritize these things to keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. And so I think um, there was a, there was a, someone, I think it was Dan, I just threw it up here. Isn't it? Uh, he said, you know, keep a list and Daryl, sorry, keep a list and manage, um, manage everything that way and like put out the big fires first, right? Yeah. Go <laughs> um, in order of importance. Yeah. And that's, that's really, but if you have that mental list of what's going to remain important in your life, then that helps in managing those things. And I think, uh, anyone who's stepping into homesteading and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. Yeah. So I'm putting myself in the same category, but when we moved on to the property here, mm -hmm. I was like, you want to do all the things. You want to, you know, immediately have chickens yes. and have this and have large that. Large garden. Have, a, have a, a large garden, have dairy cows, have whatever. You want all the things all at once. And uh, that would seem productive, sure. right? Because you can produce all of these things for yourself. You right. can, but you are going to drown. Then enters like, the curse, right? Then, <laughs> then the curse. enters the curse. Because if it's done just like anything, all things have to be done like properly and in order. Cause yeah. the minute you lose sight of that, you can be productive, 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 but you, but everything else falls apart because right. you're so productive doing all of the things that, you know, you want to do that mattered. And, right. And then everything else, including parts of the farm, including parts of your family, yeah. whatever can fall just apart. And then that really doesn't do any good then we're not really being productive. We're yeah. actually causing damage uh, more so than than anything else. So I, I want everyone to be real and I'm gonna tell a story too, but I wanna know, um, yeah, have you guys ever gotten in over your head and or what failures? And I'm not, there's no judgment with fa failures, but I can say like- You've got a list of them. <laughs> what has worked and what has not worked, right? right? And so right. Um, share with us, you know, what. What have you ever just felt in over your head? Have, have you had failures? 
again, we know that not everybody is running a full blown homestead, but in life, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you thought this was a great idea. And then in the end, it took you away from your family too much. You know, how did right. you rein that in? What would you consider um, a failure in the grand scheme of things? You know, and and it's OK to recognize that doesn't mean you're a failure. <laughs> it right. just means like, whoa, I'm it's, laying this it's the down. the process of having to reevaluate what is going on. Well, and we knew um, we knew going into this that the only way we would really be able to be successful at it is if we kind of were home a lot together. Right. So we've made some decisions in order to do that. We've seen some families kind of drowned when it comes down time to, uh, you know, they want to maybe own a, they want to be on a farm, but yep. then they also want to do all these sports with their kids. And then they also want to do, uh, I mean, fill Everything. in the blank, yeah. like a gym membership. And right. then they're, <laughs> um, I know. I'm not saying they're failures, but they're learning opportunities. I love that mentality. We know that's Darryl. the truth, right? Uh, sometimes, though, we need to speak just plainly as far as um, they they initially, until you understand what that learning point is, it does feel like that failure. So, and I'm okay with acknowledging that. Like, there's times when, like, you can be going headstrong into something, and then all of a sudden realize this is not working, and you, for that moment, you do feel like you failed, and. But then that's where the grace comes in yeah. and you take a second to recenter. You take a second to say, is this a blessing or a curse? And then you figure out where you're going to, you're going to make that correction. You're going to take that learning angle and you're going to move forward in it. So um, we're just talking about the, is your product productivity in your life, in your farm, in your homestead? Is it a blessing or a curse? Because if you don't keep it in the same, in the right framework, it can feel quickly like it's a curse. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you don't know the results of that until later. So like if I if I make all of my bread from scratch and if I I'm going to list a couple things, but yeah. you could put in anything that pertains to you. So let's say I make all my bread from scratch. I make all my cheese from scratch. I milk the dairy cow. We collect the eggs. We raise our own chicken. We raise our own beef. Let's say we make the list go on. We raise 90% of our own food, fill in the blank, right. whatever pertains to you. So if, let's say I can list off that I've done all those things. I sound very productive, but what you may not see in someone's life, and I praise the Lord for uh, the relationship that we have with our kids, right. but what you don't know is when you look behind closed doors, okay, so you're super productive. How is your relationship your with your kids? For sure. <laughs> How is your relationship with your husband? With your family, um, are you? Is your body deteriorate, deteriorating <laughs> are you, are you because you're exhausted? Yes. Right? Yeah. You, you know, are you, like, yeah. <laughs> are you getting proper rest? Are things getting completed? You know, or are you just starting everything and not finishing it? Yeah. There are so many things that uh, I think somebody said that productivity is all relative, and that is so true. Yeah. Because you can't judge a person from one success. You have to look at a hole and say, yeah. yeah. And when I say judge a person, it's like internal judgment. Like I need to be able to look at my life and say, um, am I keeping things in order? You know, am I, uh, prioritizing properly? Have I ever jumped in and over my head? I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to talk to a personal experience on this. Right. I think, and again, uh, Daryl, I'm not saying it was a failure because I really, I learned so, so much, but when we added dairy cows, first of all, I didn't know what I was in for. Um, I had read all the information sure, uh, and we were uh, successful at it. I wouldn't yeah. say it wasn't. No, we did but, well at it. Uh, but we definitely jumped in quickly. So we didn't have fencing set up. Every it, We didn't have. Um, Even a proper milking machine. Yeah, we first. didn't have we did, a milking we did stanchion. Hand milking. We did hand milk. That was fine. That though. was fine. I actually, I actually prefer hand milking over machine. Yeah. I hate cleaning. It took a little the, bit longer. Yeah, I hate cleaning the milk machine. <laughs> I'd much rather just, you know, go out there and spend my time hand milking. But um but with three dairy cows, which is what we had, it, it wasn't practical. Right. So um, I I feel like I maybe jumped in headfirst into the dairy cows thing. And we had them for a few years, but it was something that I, I almost felt like convicted of. I was like, okay, I need to prioritize the right things here. Right. And at that time, it was my uh, my kids needed me for that morning time for school. Right. Because uh, we do school at home. And the older girls are very competent and very independent. Yep. Um, but the younger three still need me, needed me more yep. so even at that time. That was a couple years ago now. Um, and it was it was just one of those things 
where I felt like I was like, okay, hurry, do this, hurry, do that, hurry, I got to do this, I got to go, get back in, and then get this, and then things wouldn't work right, you know how it is with animals, right. things wouldn't work right, and then you're like, you know, whatever, so it's just, it was one of those things where I had to kind of eat my words or eat my pride, which no one else was putting this on me, this was just me doing it to myself, right? Um, and lay that down for a season, right? And put keep the first thing the first thing. And at that time, my priority needed to be my family right. and not necessarily being productive in the area of providing dairy for us. Correct. Um, whether that's milk, cheese, you know, ice cream, all the stuff. So that was something that a personal experience where I, we can call it a failure, but I know what everybody's saying. It's not a failure. It was just one of those things like I could have done that better. Yep. And I could have improved upon that. Yeah. And I think it's just important that that's what we're trying to speak to today is that it's okay to make adjustments to keep the main thing, the main thing. And it's, it's okay to say, this is the way that this is going to actually be productive for me is to maybe reprioritize these things. And that in all of that production, our encouragement to you today is that you would focus on the things that matter. And as has been stated by a couple of people is that you would just prioritize what is important and what is worth keeping your focus on and that you make the necessary adjustments to to do that then don't let the the things the the events of life or the the things of the farm and the homestead don't let them 100 percent dictate everything that happens in your life it's yeah. okay to say i need to scale back at this or i can't do this and, and make those adjustments for the family's sake and for the relationship yeah. side of it. And we were just saying, you know, cause we just, we just got back from this 11 day road trip, which right. we haven't done a long trip like that in a long time. Right. We do little, little things, um, shorter things. But when, uh, we, we were discussing where he said, there's just kind of like, there's no real good time or, or convenient time to have kids yes. you know you just gotta dive in and have kids yes there's you're never gonna be fully prepared it's kind of the same with this it was like there's never gonna be a good time like a you know everything's fine everything's great everything's on autopilot right. there's never gonna be any of those times so you just have to make it work yeah and that's what we did we're like we're just gonna make this work we have um we had a wonderful farm helper, yes. a, a team. He helps us and he did a, an amazing job taking care of things while we were gone. And, you know, you just, you let things just, you can't worry about it. You just have to kind of, ex, you know, hope that everything is going to be okay while you're gone and, yeah. and you do your best, but it's worth it. It's worth it to make those, those things, the priorities first when they need to be and uh, keep them, you know, keep those priorities at the top of your mind. Yeah. And for us, you know, as the kids get older, adjustments have to be made yeah adjustments yeah. have to make but it also is like okay they're not going to be home forever right like, you know like they're all growing up and i don't you don't want to just like squash that time you know i don't right. want to be so productive that i don't have a relationship with you know all of my kids you know right. or, uh, and they come alongside us that's not what i'm talking about we're but sometimes just working side by side isn't really always intentional spending time together you know yeah you can be in the presence of someone and not really be present with that someone right. as well and that's something that we've learned you know that there there is a learning curve to this stuff and it's okay you know i think the biggest thing is is in reference to another comment that was up there is um is that it's better to try and then and then fail and then be able to um, know that you that you can do it right. Um, and I'm kind of paraphrasing that, but just in that, don't let your 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 productivity or what you're doing be that that proverbial anvil around your ankle that's pulling you down. At some point in time, it's okay. Yeah. And that's I think that's the whole point of the conversation is getting into the heart of is it's okay to identify in your heart, take that breath and be like, okay, this is this is a priority. And this is where I need to go with this to make this whole unit of the family work. And I know yeah. that we're kind of beating it up here, but this is something that if we don't share our hearts in it, if you guys don't have a chance to kind of bounce things back and forth, is that's the whole point of the community of just being raw and honest. Like it's okay to be like, you know what? I, I tried a garden this year and it didn't work out at all. Like I thought it was going to. Yeah. And that's okay. So, and instead of getting discouraged about that, you just can like regroup and and uh, think about the things that you did well. So maybe your garden wasn't very productive, but you were super intentional about your relationships with your kids. Hey, 
That's a win. That's a win. That is Huge a win. big win. Yep. Um, or you <laughs> learned a new skill or, you know, whatever. I, it's so many things. It doesn't. And that's what I want to kind of like change the definition of productivity because in the world's eyes, being productive is look at, look at what I did, right. you know, look at yeah. all the, the, what I can show for what I did, but it's sometimes the things you can't see. Those intangibles. Right? Yeah. It's those things that you can't see that are like, okay, look what I did. No one sees it, but <laughs> I, my kid just shared this with me and it means so much to me. Or, right. you know, you observe. Or um, we took, we took an 11 day road trip with eight people in a van and Nobody Everyone killed each lived. other. Everyone lived. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we have good kids. It, it was like great. 3,500 miles of driving, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, we had such a good time. And that's what I'm talking about. So, like, some people might think, oh, I can't leave because then I won't, I can't go on a vacation because then I won't be productive. But yeah. everywhere that we went, the relationships that we built, that we connected with, yeah. So friends that was and family, new and friends, grandmas and grandpas, and yeah, special yeah. time. That was way more productive, in my opinion, right. than having a successful tomato plant. Like I would yeah. much rather um, garden my <laughs> my fa- my relationships with people. Yes, yeah. and um, and then the other stuff has to come second. You know, so it's like that's when that productivity becomes a curse yeah. when you prioritize that above everything else and then everything else falls apart for sure so so we just wanted to add some encouragement today it's sunday it's time for us just to take a breath and we're not going to make this a super long four hour conversation not that we've ever done it before uh, real quick drag on. just for yeah. fun if you guys have any questions pop them up there now yes this um, is rapid fire question time we'll right? see it was <laughs> So for the road trip, just in case you guys didn't see the brief little quick video that we talked about the progression of things, um, yeah. we started here and then we beelined it to, I have a very productive husband. <laughs> no, I'm just 12, 12 hours and 15 minutes from Illinois to New York. Yeah. So that's what our GPS said was 12 hours and 15 minutes. And that's literally how long it took us. And we even stopped because um, I packed all the food ahead of time yep. for the first part of our journey. So I packed all the food. We, you can keep track of questions while I'm telling the story. Yep. Um, and so we literally just, you know, picnic styled in the car and, you know, I dished out sandwiches and we, it was a very peaceful, fun, uh, smooth ride, which was really great. So we arrived at our friend's house in New York and we pushed through because we were um, showing up for a, our friends were doing a vow renewal. So that was really special for us yep. to be there and be a part of it. And we did some barn dancing there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys, if, I don't know if you guys know that, that um, means, we do that. Yeah. For, I, uh, I call barn dances. And so it was really fun. We had a great time. Then we got to go up into Portland and hang out with Annie's mom and dad. Yes, in Maine. In Maine. So, um, and so my dad grew up in Maine, and uh, later in his life moved to Illinois. Right. But he he grew up in Maine and lived in different places and had um, had has, but had a small little lake. They call it camp. They call it camp. Yeah, they call it camp in Maine. Lake house. Here we it's call it lake small, house. Yeah, you know. Camp. Um, a beautiful lake, uh, uh, in Maine yeah. and it was just really fun because, uh, not only did we get to do all the sightseeing stuff, my dad, um, chartered a boat, um, uh, in Portland yeah. so we could go out and the kids got to fish and go lobster, <laughs> uh, you know, catch lobster on the coast. And like, you've got the, I've got pictures of the kids fishing with the Portland headlight in the background. It was really cool. And it was this precious time with the family that we we really value just being able to spend that time, um, you know, driving around, um, going in and out of doing those different things. It was so fun. So then, so we did Portland, we did the lake house, we did Acadia National Forest, which was fun, but we were stuck in a storm up there. So we're on top of Cadillac Mountain. And you can't see anything. We were socked We in. were in yeah. a cloud. It was like you could see the clouds like blowing past your face. Like yeah. it was the funniest. I mean, <laughs> I was disappointed, but the kids had a great time and they didn't care. No. And it was fun. And then we uh, we made it up to our friend's house in Maine. Yeah. Um, you know what? It, I've, I left it one part. I don't know if Ruth's on here, but we got to spend time with some um, YouTube we friends. We, we stopped and we saw some, or some YouTube friends stopped and saw us. Yeah, they had come to Illinois and we got to know them. Yep. And I reached out and said, hey, we're going to be right by you guys. And so we, we visited with them in Maine too, which is really fun. Right. Then made it to our friend's house and again, had a blast. 
did more barn dancing yeah. and just had a great time. I still fellowship. really want to take some time sometime down the road. It's my it's my dream that we take a chunk of days and that we go and we visit some other farms, some other followers, and we do some just backstories on what you guys have going on. Because there's so many of you out there that aren't actually creating content, which is totally fine because there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and But, but still it still stories. would be great stories. Still cool I still stories. am so intrigued by all the stories and by the heart and the passion of the homesteading and the preparedness community. So anyway, a uh, couple quick questions we will jump into here real quick. Have you extended your growing season with the hoop house? Um, here we go. I'll throw it up there. It's coming um, up. That is coming up. We need to start that and we need to start that soon. Well, okay. So uh, like uh, like our good friend, Daryl, who we keep quoting, he keeps yes. commenting below, but he, <laughs> we've never met. In in spirit, Daryl, we're, we're friends. Um, <laughs> Uh, he, he made the point, you make a list and you yes. follow that list and you check it off. The, the first priority in the high tunnel is we still have tomatoes in there, like doing amazing. So we've already pulled out the squash and the pumpkins, like that's all done and out of there. And now we need to pull out the tomatoes and then prep everything again. Yeah. And cause we, we took back the weeds. Right. Um, and, uh, we are going to go ahead and do our winter right. stuff. So I want to do our cold weather crops, our, our lettuces, because I miss our lettuce cause yeah. it. We spinaches. had yes, yeah, yeah. spinach, lettuce, kale, um, broccoli, Swiss chard. Julianne's not down here to yeah. tell me all the things that we're going to plant. Yep. All the cold weather, all, all the, the cold, cold weather, weather stuff. Crops. You know, um, you can do your Brussels sprouts and all that stuff. So that's coming up. And these are baby steps for us. Like I said, there's a lot of other people out there that have kind of hit their stride doing this stuff. Um, we're not full on market gardening. We're doing it for personal and then some local sales here. Yeah. Um, but we've talked about this. We're going to jump into. Uh, microgreens this year. So that's another cold season crop that we're going to use to extend yeah. our growing season. Um, the other question is, um, do you grow herbs in containers? Which herbs? Um, what are, oh, sorry, what herbs do you grow in containers so, and yeah. still overwinter them inside? And I think that that's going to be another interesting thing. We might try and I have to talk to put them in the high again, tunnel. is putting them in the high tunnel, tunnel and see if they can weather through that instead of taking up space in the house. Yeah, um, uh, we did our herbs and terracotta pots this year, except for a lot of mint, which is um, taking over around the base of our fruit trees that we are a little orchard area that yeah, we have. So yeah. mint is out there and it's just taking over. So I, we're going to have lifetime supply of mint. But for those um, who just joined us, we are answering questions. So if you have questions, throw them up and we will try to get to them. Here. And the whole point of the topic at hand was, is your productivity a blessing or a curse? So if yes. you want to jump on that bandwagon, you can too. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. We, we just had this conversation. Okay. Let me get back to it. So, okay. So Julianne planted all of your typical herbs that you could imagine. Yes. Um, so like basil, rosemary, thyme, thyme yeah. all right. Uh, did I say oregano already? I should remember what I'm right. saying. Um, all of the typical things, but some fun ones she did were chamomile, yep. uh, lavender. Um, oh, I wish she was here with me. Anyway, if she, if something she with would, a B. She did. Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, she did a, a lot of things um, and uh, grew roses in containers this year too. We have yes. some on the property already, but she we planted some um, Damascus roses in containers for her rose water, rose yeah. jelly, uh, like stuff like that. So yeah. lots of herbs and they all did really well. We just had to be really careful about keeping them nice and watered uh, because, you know, anything that's in a container, um, can dry out very yeah, easily. Yeah, very you quickly. have to watch the water in those too. So, so we're gonna we're gonna try to move them over to the um, to the high tunnel and see how they winter over there. Yeah, I think so, it would be fun. So if you if you want to jump over to the YouTube channel as well, they have we did a, a, a an in depth look at a friend of ours garden out there, and he started off doing. And I'm gonna kind of answer this question um, with the uh, with the one that's up there right now about the woven weed fabric. Um, he started off doing a back to Eden garden about um, eight years ago because we were talking with him at the time during that of his kind of getting into that. And then this year, because of some family situations, 
um, they had to switch up how they were doing things and they went to using just regular old black plastic, which there's a whole debate on, you know, the whole issue with black plastic, but it worked for them. It's working for them and it's better than not producing anything. And it's probably still They're way better than all the stuff that gets sprayed from the store anyhow. So that's yeah. a whole different discussion. We'll We're let not, that one lie. You can keep your opinion on that. The point is, is that they, they had a back to Eden garden or no till, um, no till garden or a lasagna garden, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they did, they had a really successful garden. So jumping into the question that's up on the screen right now about the weed fabric is yes, we've discussed it and we have, we have now a five year no till back to Eden garden. Um, that is hyper productive as far as the soil structure goes. Anything, including weeds, weeds. Yes. <laughs> grow really yeah. good in there. The soil is amazing. It, it's like really nice. So the the answer is is that this is something that we're highly considering to help help with the reduction of the weeds. Um, to maybe just keep it down to where we only have to deal with weeds in a smaller area. And these are all the important things of why you have to continually reevaluate. And it's okay. There is no one way to do it. There's yeah. trust me. There's so many people out there that they'll say my way is the best way. It's the best way for them, and it's yeah. the best way that they've mastered. Um, and it's probably the best way that they can stick with. I'm looking outside because it just got really dark. It's, like this and it just got in. windy and dark. Yeah. So we can um, use rain probably. It's just an interesting thing when it comes to that. And I am not for or against. We've kind of gone back and forth with the whole weed barrier thing. Um, I'll keep my opinion to myself. Because there are <laughs> other inherent issues of keeping it down and all that stuff. So there you go. <laughs> Why I choose to try? Yeah, I agree with you. Yes, give it a give it a try and see if it works. I and I think really the point of the conversation, and I hope this comes across, is uh, whether or not your productivity is a blessing or curse is up to you, and how you yeah, handle it. That's true. Um, because it's it's a it's a physical mat, uh, matter. It's a physical matter. It's a spiritual matter. It's an <laughs> emotional matter. If you're out of balance, you know, in any of those areas, you you need to reevaluate. It's again, when you're putting things, when you're forcing it, when you're like, okay, I'm today, I am going to collect, I'm going to harvest all my tomatoes. I'm going to can them all up and I'm going to get it all done today. And I look over mm -hmm. and my son needs me. That has to take precedence. Right. You know, like you have to choose um, priorities in these things. Right. Or like for us, you know, we do have a list. I am a list person. Yeah. And I, there's some things, there's a lot of stuff that we want to get done sure. and would like to get done and need to get done. And you have to pick according to order. So Josh, you know, it's a very quick priority here to get these meat bird tractors completed yeah, um, because they're going to, they're gonna out, for them. yeah, because we've expanded into a large amount of meat birds. And so we need to have more space right now. They're great because they're small, but we need to split them. Yeah. And so that has to take your first uh, <laughs> priority. I don't know. What am I spilling? We, I don't know. We covered our weed garden. Oh, no, no, this I, said is I, gonna, this I said is I was going to keep my opinion to yes. myself. Uh, this is uh, Vanessa. Um, she says, uh, we covered our garden with grass clippings this year. It really helped with the weeds. A lot of people. If you can like collect grass your garden. grass clippings yeah. and you can throw them down densely enough, I think that they definitely are a great option. Tons of organic matter. Um, that's great. So. Yeah, Elaine, um, I hope I'm saying your name right, Elaine from the UK. They our our growing season was very challenging just because it was like all or nothing. You know, we had we were late getting stuff in the ground because at least in Illinois, it was very uh it was cold and wet. I mean, yeah, very cold. Like it would have killed your starts, you know. You would have had to cover everything up and we have too big of a garden to just do that. Yeah. So we were late getting it in, and then we had awesome weather for a while but it was kind of dry mm -hmm. and then suddenly it got hot and it was still dry and hot, hot. And I know so many in the South were dealing with drought. We didn't have that here, but it still was dry. And it just, so just now in September here in Illinois, which is kind of late is right now we're, we've got, we've got to get busy. <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. And, and Julianne um, carries a lot of the weight for the canning around here, but she loves it. And she's like, she's just like, like this it. in the she kitchen. So well. <laughs> she yeah. just gets it done. And it's so fun. Um, so yeah, it tastes good. It, yeah, yeah, I understand um, that it's it's always a balance. She made, Elaine said it's a balance between the home life and and the homestead life or growing your garden or whatever. And yeah. I think that's just the answer to all of this is balance 
understand keeping priorities in check and having open dialogue with a spouse if you have a spouse involved or yeah, your kids. You're working with. I mean, sometimes we'll just have the have the big kids with us and be like team meeting. How's everybody? We call it family <laughs> meeting, you know, or team meeting. We're like, yeah. okay, how's everybody doing? Like, am I dropping the ball or is he dropping? Like, are we all okay? You know, <laughs> like just speaking honestly and openly. Right. And wondering if, you know, um, if everything's okay. Um, do you want to answer Kathy's? And you just, uh, hang on, let me throw it up here. You guys can all join oh, in too sorry. and help Kathy. Yes, this is using almost waste high raised beds for garden seed. Um, yeah, I, th I mean, the raised bed garden beds are huge for those who have limited mobility, uh, huge safety issues right there. Um, as far as growing something easy, where, um, where are you from, uh, Kathy? Uh, yeah, like region what's your, would help a what lot. What region but, are you in? You know, anything, I, I think if, you, if you're in the northern hemisphere here, we're going to be going into our cooler season. So, I mean. Well, for most people. There's those in Florida who they're actually hitting some strides right now with they can they can grow real, really yeah, well. because it's not as hot. Because it's not as hot, you know, it's just or, or if you're out in the more arid places. But, I mean, the cut and come again lettuces are super easy, yeah. you know, tomatoes and peppers and um, you know, those are more warm weather type things, but like, so if you're going cold weather, stick with your simple, like your Swiss chard, your lettuces, your, your greens. Um, if you I like mean, kale, do ra kale. Radishes, you know, they grow fast. Rad yeah. Too. Radishes you'll have in no time. 20, what? 26 days. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can keep it simple with some of those cold weather crops, but, yeah. um, there's obviously easy, easy suggestions with the warm weather crops too. It just depends on kind of where you're at. And, and the lettuces, the lettuces are nice too, because a lot of them, if you just get the, um, like almost like it's almost like a microgreen variety it's i think it's just the lettuce cut and come agains um that they grow they grow up and then you just start trimming them off and, yeah. and harvesting them as they grow and you basically just you know trim off this section over here then move to this section and kind of move around as they're coming kind of up behind each yeah. other so yeah um that's fine uh cover crops here's a great one i like this um this is something I want to do more of. I want to get Annie and I are kind of divided about this one. We also have our own opinions yes. about this one too, Daryl. <laughs> we I'll have, keep that to myself. I like as the well. idea of <laughs> seasonal cover crops. I like the idea of like oats or barley or something like that. It it does if you don't terminate them proper properly, it, they become a little annoying. Um, but at the end of the day, they're stay <laughs> they're still way better than the weeds that would take over. So I disagree and I'll tell, I'll speak my, it. I'll speak my piece about it in this one, but <laughs> it's okay. Somehow we still manage to love each other and yeah. work together, even though we disagree. I would rather cover it, the space. She with, wants to use things like fabric or whatever. No, or, or cardboard, whatever. Okay. I would yep. rather cover and not create more work um, because we, I don't want to till a cover crop in. You have to give it plenty of time to die off, like yeah. tons of time to fully die off. Um, so I, I think it can backfire. I totally see. Now, one way I will support a cover crop in, in a particular uh, example in a particular area because we ended up having, we didn't plant it. But we ended up having oh, um, volunteer yes. pumpkin and squash because we feed pumpkins back to our chickens and our cow, uh, you know, our steer. We, the sheep will eat them. Yeah, the yeah. sheep. So we feed all that back to our animals as a natural dewormer and just because it's good free food. Right. And um, then their manure gets put back out into the garden space, of right. course, mixed in with the wood chips. And uh, it's wonderful, but we have ton every year. We have tons of volunteer pumpkins and and squash. Yeah. And the uh, the pumpkin patches that came up totally beat any weeds. Yeah. And they, they were amazing. So besides squash bugs, they yeah. did their job in like this huge portion of the high tunnel and in our orchard area. They just took over. And so we it was a it was a cover crop. It was. Um, and so I like cover crops that I can feed back to the animals. So there's I'm not completely anti it. I think it has to be the right situation and it has to be speaking about cover crops. So I am this is an area that I am intrigued in and and I'm thinking even we're entering into a good season for here is um, oats and barley, things like that, they grow well in the sixties, uh, forties, you know, the lower temperatures. They germinate, they grow. And so there's part of me that's wondering is for the area, for instance, there's there's a, a chunk of our 
I'm looking out to the garden right now as I'm speaking to you all. It's um, right behind you. But um, <laughs> the, there's a chunk of our garden that's going to be going into kind of a resting season here. Yeah. And I'm wondering if for a short season, because even if they do decide to go back to reseed again, it's still way easier to manage the oats or the barley or something like that versus the wheat seeds um, because they won't continually just cycle themselves. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it wouldn't be an idea for us to, to try a, to brief trial an area um, to see if we can beat out some other competition in that area. Too. Yeah, maybe in the high tunnel though, we're going to be planting, we're going to be doing a fall slash early winter crop. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm excited about that. That's the winter will kill it off. Yes, you're right. Right, which I'm more talking about spring cover crops, I think. Yeah. Um, how it worked for us and how it didn't work for us. Yeah. Um, D. Hansen says the benefits to both methods that um, if you do the cover crops coming into the winter season, they're annuals. Most yeah. most all cover yeah. crops are an annual. Right. So they'll just naturally die off and then they'll put all that collected nitrogen back into the soil. Right. So now we're getting deep into gardening now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to let it become a curse. We're going to let it be a blessing so we don't get overwhelmed. I got to bring it back to the, yes. to the topic at hand. But yeah, you guys can follow along as we plant our fall garden. Yeah. Um, we're going to get out there. Let me see. What is today? Today's Sunday. Yeah. So we're going to get out there this week and harvest out the rest of the high tunnel, pull out anything that is remaining and feed it to the chickens yep. uh, and then move forward on preparing and planting our winter crop in there, which I'm really, I'm excited about to see how long we can go, yeah. um, how far we can go into, especially with like fresh greens like yeah. lettuces and, and the kale. thing that, that we learned through some research because we're like i said we're new to this is that um you actually are getting the all of the items in there now for them to get to quasi maturity age to then just last longer into the season so stuff is going to start by by the way nature works stuff's going to stop actually growing right um and it's just going to be um actually like for instance um Spinach tastes better when it goes to freeze frost cycles up and down and it gets sweeter as it does that. So there's just some benefits to knowing like kind of like why you're doing it. Like it's not going to work for us to take out into the high tunnel and to start planting things when it gets too, too cold out there. They're just no. not going to grow. No, so I'm we have to get them going sooner than now. later. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you want to <laughs> do, which is fine. I think again, you just, you, like I said, when I came home, I'll bring it back to the vacation. When yes. I came home and I went and I looked at all of that hard work that we had spent in the garden, I could have been, I could have stayed in that like deflated state, you yeah. know, but instead I realized that I was super productive on our family trip mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe so other areas might take a hit and the garden took a hit. But um, I think someone made a comment. It was probably Daryl. Daryl should just run the show. <laughs> we don't even need to be here. He can just talk. You know, we say that in love. There's uh, no, he's got all the good <laughs> we, points. We enjoy the, the back and forth. He's got all sure. the good points. So yes. he made a comment about, um, I think, planning paralysis. I think earlier it, yeah. it flew by. And, paralysis um, and analysis. That is just uh, so true. So instead of thinking... Julianne and I rolled up our sleeves and we went out there and spent a couple hours. No, we're not using floating row covers. No. Okay. I'm just, that's, that's a, that's a hard no. We're just, we're not at the stage where we can do that. Yeah. Between the weather, the wind, um, taking the time to put those on and off. Um, so uh, anyway, what I was saying was you, you're letting him distract you. I know. So, um, uh, I could have been like overthinking how in the world being overwhelmed, how can I, how can we tackle all these weeds after, you know, but we went out there, we spent a couple hours, you're tired by the end, but it right. was within reach. Even after that one day of just getting after one it. foot in front of the other, one hand in front of the other, grabbing those weeds and pulling them out and making right. them piles. And then it's like, okay, deep breath we've made a dent, let's move on, you right. know, but I wouldn't trade the productivity that we had on the family trip for those weeks. No, I just sure. don't care no. even as much, you know, people have to come first. Relationships have to come first. Yeah. My kids and the weeds have to will first. always be here. Like the second we stop gardening someday, yeah. the weeds will, they'll quickly want to come back. Some, right? They just find their way in. Yeah. So, and even we'll probably we're plant done. something else that's pretty out there and, and, and move into that direction. You know, hi Jesse. <laughs> um, so it's just, Speaking of kids. it's just important that you, like I said, you keep the main thing, the main thing. And that's the biggest point of what we're talking about. Right. So. Right. And anytime. Fire the questions off guys. Yeah, well, anytime 
you know, your product productivity um, starts feeling like more of a curse than a blessing, it's time to reevaluate. Yes. Um, and, and then you get to this stage of the life. And I always like to throw this in on all of my lives. You get to this stage where you're like, I could add a dairy cow back in. Yes. <laughs> she keeps Maybe. bringing the dairy cows back. I want a Swiss dairy cow. Daryl, have you ever had a Swiss dairy cow? <laughs> or anybody else? Yes. Um, uh, I, I, and I think, you know, started doing to, research on them and I like them. Yeah. So. And to be fair with that, we're switching hard gears here from gardening to cows. Um, but, but like Will's old enough now. He could help like out. He could, yeah. he could run the dairy cow show. I'm sure that's what he wants to do. Anyway, I think, he'd, I think um, he'd like them. He I think, likes the sheep. I think it, it, we are getting into a season here, though, where we've we've been focusing on our pasture. And I think this is an important thing is our pasture started off kind of weak. And we we need to take a couple seasons of letting that get back to, um, yes, A2, A2. Absolutely. I, squirrel. Oh, squirrel. So I want to get to the season here of where our, our pasture is more productive. Now, these are a couple of things that we're super blessed to have in the works here is we have the rps solar pumps that you guys have seen us getting those up and going um that means for the long story short on that is that means that we have water that's not going to be an issue so Which during during dry seasons uh we can get water on it we have water and we have access to water um the shift that we're going into is that i have to protect that when it gets cold out because it's not weather protected from right. freezing so that's that one thing. So the RPS pumps that we've had with the solar pumps are going to provide us with the water. Huge plus. The other one is we have another company that we're working with. We're going to show you. I'm all about trying to show you guys different tools and products that are going to be helpful to you. You don't have to use every single one of them. But uh, we work with a company over, over called K-Line, and they have a whole pod system of these cool sprinklers that we're going to be, be able to drag around the pasture we're going to be able to use them in the high tunnel and we're going to be able to use them in the orchard space. So they are a, they're only like, yeah, can it's, you guys see it? It's only like that. Big. It's called a foot and a half or two foot pod, a uh, plastic pod. And it's got a sprinkler in it and they're 50 feet apart because they have a 25 foot over overspray. So but like I can move it. Yeah. Like by myself, you can hook with it up a to the golf cart or grease. you can drag them around the pasture yeah. by hand. So the idea is, is that we can, we can do that. Um, any ideas on solar pump stuff? So, so do me a favor. I'm going to, because we're talking about it right here. This person, who is it? I can't even read it right now. Sorry. Anyway, I got it up on the screen. RPS solar pumps. We have a video on it and we have all the links attached to it. It is a 15 minute video, I think. And it shows some great, they have great, great, great products. Jump over there. Do us a favor. I'm going to be blunt. Use our link. It, it helps us out. It just helps them see that we're talking about with you all. Um, and because it was something that they partnered together with us on, and but, it was, but they a are game, a phenomenal company and it's a game changer for us. Yes. This isn't just something that we're promoting because they gave us something. It's something that was a game changer for our farm. Yes. Having water available. That is one of the reasons why our garden actually thrived this yes. year is because we could water at will with our spring. And if, if you go to heartwayfarms.com and you go to our affiliate links, and then there's RPS right in there. You can click on it and it will take you right to their platform. It'll take you right through all of our link stuff yeah. there. Anyway, I don't want to hang on it too long, but I have to give the companies that we're working with, and I, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. The companies that we're partnering with, uh, when it comes to the community of Abundance Plus that we have the links for, when it comes to um, the K-Line stuff that we're going to be talking about with the sprinkler pods, when it comes to the RPS solar pumps, these are companies that are quality products. They're they're actually products that are fixing our problems. Yeah, they're big um, solutions. And they're solutions to them. Yeah. Um, so it's it's worth it to hang on a second here. We're not just going out and finding every little thing. Our Berkey water filter. We've been using that for years before yeah. we even started doing YouTube creation and all that stuff. Yeah. And they're a great company. We stand by what they what their product has done for our family, right. and we appreciate it. So anyway. There you go. I saw a couple questions come through. So real quick, okay. Penny, um, to answer your question, you asked uh, if we could only grow one crop, which is really hard, what would you grow? And that would probably be a different answer for each kid in the mm. family. But I would pick greens. Um, if I could only salad greens. Yep. If yeah. I could, because we know how to make homemade bread. We know how to make pasta. Like we know how to do 
that sort of thing. Um, obviously, if you can't grow tomatoes, then you can't right. have your sauce. But anyway, the point is, I think if I had to pick one thing and I could only pick one thing, I would have fresh greens all the time right. um, because they're just so beneficial, whether it's spinach or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to say- I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this one in a very wise way. Oh, go ahead. I would continue to grow grass. Oh, come on. It's a crop. That's a cheap We're grass answer. farmers. We're grass farmers, right? But you you do, you you get so much out of actually maintaining your pasture and your grass, and it's a lot of space that you can manage, and it grows pretty much by itself. Yep, that's true. It turns into it food, but... Daryl, Daryl's got my back up. No, I don't. Don't you dare, Daryl. Okay, but then I did want to say to Bonnie, yes. um, and this is exactly what we're talking about today. Can I do this? Yep, put Bonnie's Bonnie. Bonnie, we're there. gonna we're gonna throw it up there. Put yours up because I just want you to know I'm really sorry that your mom is struggling with this. I know that's hard on everybody, um, but that's exactly what we're talking about today. So your pro productivity today yes. is you are doing the best thing that you should be doing right now, and that's taking care of your mom. Yeah. If you were spending all of your time saying, look at all these tomatoes that I grew, look at this, and look at all this all this productivity, right. but then you didn't care for your mom, it doesn't matter. You have to, this, so this is exactly what we're talking about, and yes. just applaud you, and we'll be praying for you and your mom, and um, just that you're doing the right thing. I mean, your mom needs you, it's just like anything else. You. Don't be ashamed to cut off all the other stuff and keep the priorities in order, yep. right? Yes. So, so our hearts are with you in that, and we've—I think we've all—we all can say that we've we've had people in our life that have been in similar situations, and um, and it's tough. It's, yeah. It's, but it's worth making those decisions to move in that direction. So people and relationships matter. have to be first. Yep. It has to be first. Yep. You can do all every make everything homemade from scratch and and let your relationships fall apart. And you really, I would consider that a failure, not not a not a win. So yes. good job. Keep up the good work. So anyway, do you have more stuff? No, it's been I think about we've hit an, an hour. hour oh, I wanted to say one more thing real quick. Sure. I heard that. Oh, um, is this about the cow? I'm going back to the cow because okay. I got cut off so strategically. <laughs> um, <laughs> by something. Uh, yeah, I love. I'm. I don't know of any uh, Swiss dairy cow breeders near us. Right. I'm. I saw. I don't think Levi's mm -hmm. on here, but I saw um, Oklahoma. One of the universities in Oklahoma has a department that might have Swiss cows oh, there. Yeah. But anyway, I did hear that a lot of them are A two A two. That it's possible that they're not. Maybe right. they all are. I don't know. I don't know. Girls yeah. said they were all. We do like we do. We have done a lot of research on the A two A two cow um, products. All yeah. of the you know the milk products that come with that dairy products. And that is something that we, if you have a choice in the matter, obviously yeah. that is, you know, it's the next step to the, the purest of the So I, I'm searching <laughs> for three things. A, you guys can all help me. <laughs> I'm searching for a Swiss, a brown Swiss dairy cow, A2A2, and that is a ready grass fed only. And that's super sweet. Four things. And it has all four working quarters. <laughs> Five things. Okay. So okay. We got to so, hold on. We got to real. Uh, what colors do we want it to be? It's a brown Swiss. They're, okay. got, they're okay. kind of the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. Uh, squirrel again. So, anyway, I want to, yeah, I would love to find that. Um, we had to convert our Guernseys over to being grass fed, which, which took, a little bit of work. took some time. Yeah. Um, and it did. It they, they do transition well, but they act like they're having like a. <laughs> Cocaine withdraw, you know, like they're they yeah. they really like their green. So um yeah. anyway, I'm on the search and hopefully I don't have to drive to Canada for it, right, Daryl? Um also on our way home, we <laughs> if you're watching this back, you just yeah, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. You gotta um on our way home we stopped from Maine to Niagara. Yep. I'm sorry, on the way home from Maine to home, we stopped by Niagara, Niagara Falls, Falls on like a whim. We weren't gonna do that. Right. But we, 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 waved, were there nine... we waved to all the Canadian folks because we didn't, you know, across the border, across yep. the border, yep. you know, um, and it was a, it was raining, but it was fun. It was a, it was a good time. It was a good day. So yeah, remember, remember, keep the first things, the first things. If you can't laugh about it, you know, and enjoy it, um, you know, some days, you know, you put your head down and you're just trying to get stuff done and it's easy to lose sight of everybody else around you that like is like crying out for attention or right. needing needing direction in certain things. And um, 
it just comes to a point where if that productivity, again, is feeling like more of a weight, a heavy weight that you're carrying or a curse that you're carrying around, then something's out of order. Productivity um, should be something that is good and yeah. beneficial and beautiful and a provision, you know, and all of these things. And the minute it turns into not that, it's probably time to reevaluate. Um, and we've already read, you know, talked to several people here as, as you have put up your comments right. um, about life situations that come up that has to take priority. So anyway. All right, so do us a favor real quick. A couple things. We have a, we have a, a request of you guys is hit the subscribe button. If you have not subscribed, please, it's a huge help to us. Number two, right now, if you're watching down below abundance plus if you haven't gotten on there yet you can get under free seven days seven day free trial click um, the link click so the link low. and then if you're interested we have the discount code that will give you even more money off if you're going to keep get on there um and then the the fun thing about that is is we have our editor put together a really high quality uh family story of the heartway farms kind of the beginnings and then kind of all the way through to where we're at now and what we uh, what we focus on, where our hearts yeah. at, where our family's at. So there's a, a really really good quality video over there that's that's up on the page. So abundanceplus.com. You can get the links down below. You can hit the subscribe button, and then for any of the things that we've talked about, you can jump over heartwayfarms.com and you can look at the girls stuff that they have for sale on there. I know I'm giving you a sales pitch, guys. It's, it's just the way it's it is. My though. girls, it's not me. Yes, the girls have the stuff that they've made on there, and it is sell on there. And then also we have all of our affiliate links um, to the different things that we've talked about in here. So, um, yes, that's about it there. Sorry. I had, yeah, to, get, I had to just, that's, okay. that's the info that we've got to get out though. We've, uh, we've given up on Netflix and the other things, the other things. Yeah. I don't need to name them all, Yeah. but really for a uh, similar pricing, you can have ad free, which is so nice. Yes ad free uh documentaries and uh, thank you diane wait wait <laughs> you gonna put it up there yes um thank you diane thank you um and there's so much more to it that we might be able to share in the future but anyway we're just we had to try to consolidate it to a half hour right, right. <laughs> so um it's just so nice to beautiful documentaries over there, uh, encouragement and inspiration and yep. how to's. And, um, if you have the community side of it, it's works more like, a, a, not only can you chat back and forth, yeah. but it's like a Craigslist. Cause you know, you can, on Facebook, you can't sell your farm animals. You get shut down and they don't let you do that. Yep. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity to do that on there. So yep. anyway, go check it out. We appreciate you all so much. Like seriously, not just, no. I'm not just saying that we really so do. much that we got to meet up with some people out all the way in Maine. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and someday we'll probably be able to make it up to our Canadian folks because it would be really fun to get up there someday too. It's on the list, yes, everyone. It is. There's so many. It's it's on the list. There's so much to do. So <laughs> all right. So thanks for jumping on, and we just wanted to make sure that you guys keep the priorities all straightened out in your life, and that you uh, keep the main thing the main thing, and don't let the productivity, the things that are supposed to be a blessing. Don't let them become a curse and start to weigh you down and cause too much issue in your life. Yep. So keep on keeping on. Yes. All right. Y'all have a good one. Have a blessed day.